Welcome to Our Homestead, friends. Today we have another solar video for you talking about the importance of positioning and laying out your solar components. And you need to plan for this ahead of time. We're also gonna be walking through how to make some of the initial connections between each component. A lot of your components have clearances that are associated with them, necessary clearances for proper operation. The grow watts need 20 inches above and below and eight inches on each side. And things like our solar edge midpoint transformer here has clearances also associated with it. And those are important to adhere to. So we really had to plan out how things were gonna set up in our solar room here ahead of time. Additionally, when it comes to running wires for everything, like this PV disconnect box, you need to understand where your PV needs to come in from the outside, where it's going to poke through your wall, and everything like that. So it's good to draw out a plan of the space you have available so everything fits properly. We're also going to be making some of the initial connections to the components because it's important where you run your wiring. And you can see an example of that. We've got some one inch conduit running around the top of the room right here and over just past the light, it's poking up into our attic and running back to our main panel. So the first thing we did was attach this concrete backer board to the wall. Now the grow watt inverters recommend it and I think it's good to have it just as a safety uh, barrier. It's not flammable, a uh, safety barrier between your drywall and uh, your inverters or other equipment. So we've got that up on the wall. We've got some lag screws in studs and it's really secure. Head down in the description below and click on the link to Signature Solar, which is where we got all of our solar components like the Solar Edge Midpoint Transformer. Signature Solar is great with helping DIYers through the process of putting together their own solar systems. Now I've made some initial marks on the wall here measuring for the proper clearances and I'm just going to mark where I need to put my first holes to hold the grow lot, then I'll level everything out. All right, we've got our inverters on the wall and our transformer. Now it's time to put on the sub panel. So the best spot for us to put the sub panel is directly below the transformer. That's going to make it really easy to run the wires from the transformer and straight across from the inverters. And then it's nice that this sub panel is wide. So that's going to leave some room on this side over here to run our wire back to our main panel right off of one of these knockouts on this side. So we've got everything up on the wall in its proper position with the proper clearances and a good orientation to one another so that it's easy to hook up the wiring. So we put our PV disconnect switch here in the house. We are gonna have our PV wires coming in from the side and I wanted it centered between these two inverters so that it was easy to run the wires out of the top of our PV disconnect to each one of them and we're not interfering with any wires running over to our sub panel. That means somewhere down here, I'm gonna have some conduit coming in with those wires. So this project should only take you about a day to do. However, if you have to run wire through your attic and connect it to your main panel and all of that, it might take you a little bit longer. So I've already started wiring these up. Let's show you how it's done. So for our nice switch, you do not need a fused nice switch. This one is fused, so it'll need fuses in it. No big deal, that's all we could find, so that's what we had to get. Also for our conduit, we're using this flexible conduit, which is actually really nice to work with. It is, I think, three quarter inch, and I will be able to just get uh, all the wires that we need through that. So you might need to go a little bit more if you don't want to kind of squeeze them through there, but it should be fine. Make it work the way uh, is easiest for you and with what you have available. So we've got all of our conductors here. Our black and red are going to attach to the top of the knife switch, and then we're going to clip them. We're going to bring them through here. They're going to attach to the bottom. Our neutral is going to go over here on this side, and we're going to ground 
uh, our bare grounds, our naked grounds to this box. So you don't really need the knife switch. It's just an added extra barrier of safety because we do have that interlock kit on the main panel. So from our knife switch or safety switch as they're called to our sub panel, we've got our four conductors. We've got our ground, which is gonna come over here to the side. We've got our neutral, the white one, here to the top of this bar. And then our two hots because it's 240 and we're gonna put them on either one of these lugs on either side. So red and black. And at the end, when everything's hooked up, I'll go over it again just to make sure it's very clear. So from our transformer, our balancing transformer here, we've got our neutral in here in this blue, and we've got line one and line two. I still need to run those. We've got our green, which is our uh, ground. So it's got a grounding lug on the end of it, or a, a lug, and it's run down here into the box. This white will go to the neutral bar on the side. The green will run down to one of our grounding bars, either on this side or this side, it really doesn't matter. And over here, we've got our red and our black to line one and line two on each one of our inverters. Now, it's super important to keep all the line ones, line ones, all the line twos, line twos. Line one goes into the top part of the breaker, line two into the bottom. Make sure they're all the exact same. We're gonna run line one to the top of the breaker, line two to the bottom. Next one, same thing. And with the transformer, same exact thing. So you can see in our breaker panel, we have got our breakers. And when you have one on either side like this, you need to keep them, uh, the poles the same on each breaker. So some boxes are flipped so that line one would be on top on this side and line one would be on the bottom on that side. It just depends on how it's designed. This is a, a square D box and they're the same. So if I plug this breaker in on this side and this one in on this side, they both contact the top on their line one and the line two is on the bottom. And that's really nice for keeping things organized. So let's talk about the wire. Originally, when I was discussing and conversing about these, uh, the system and how it's set up, I was told that 10 gauge wire would be appropriate. So 10 gauge is actually good for their three kilowatt inverters. These are the fives and the manual recommends eight gauge wire. So I actually bumped that up to an eight gauge wire and I'm gonna bump these up to 40 amp breakers instead of the 30s I was originally directed to. Now you can run the eight gauge into the 30 and it will trip at 30 though, instead of 40. So you wouldn't get the full amperage if you needed it. I don't think you do in the system, but I'm not sure. So I will be flipping these out for 40s. Now, the only other question I have is about grounding for these inverters. And I didn't see anything in the manual and I cannot find anything online regarding it. And I have not been able to actually uh, have time to get in contact with Signature Solar again uh, about this. It's got a space for a ground. And so I think I'm gonna ground it. I'm gonna ground each inverter into the sub panel. The only person that I've seen do that is Will Prouse and he uses the extension cord um, in your, or in his AC out to power things off. I think he's got the 3K, uh, the smaller inverter. Regardless, I'm gonna ground them just to be safe. And if someone knows better, or if I can get a hold of Signature Solar, then we'll answer that question definitively for you. So you can see I've already put the fittings on the sub panel and that's just easier to do because I don't wanna take everything off the wall when I do put the conduit on later uh, and knock out and everything, put everything back together. That's kind of silly. So just put them in now, it's much easier. And I wanna get everything up and running before I stick conduit on everything. So these grow watts are nice. They come with these protectors for each hole. You can put a conduit connection here and that's what I'm gonna do uh, in the future when I do connect the conduit. But these will protect it from the wires from getting cut. So we've got our AC uh, input here in the front and our AC output here at the back. And what we're just gonna do is come up into the terminal, pretty easy, insert it in, and then screw it into place, making sure that it's nice and snug and it doesn't come out. So the only thing I don't like about these grow watts so far is that this wiring harness here in front is strained. I really had to 
push it back to get the wires in uh, in the uh, AC output here in the back. And this one could be a little bit longer because it is a little, there's a tiny bit of play in it, but not much. So just remember, now we've got our ground, our line, and our neutral as labeled on here, but this is line one and line two. Remember that. Line one, line two. Line one's red, line two, I put the black. You can do whatever color here you want, but just keep everything consistent so you don't get a short circuit. Now we'll do the same thing in the same order for the transformer and for the other inverter. So we're gonna wire the transformer. I'm gonna put in one of our wires here and try and snake it through the top. So if you remember, we got line one from below is our red, so L1 here is on the bottom. And you need a really skinny screwdriver here and you need to push in really, really hard to get it into this connection. So just jam it in there and then you'll be able to get your wire all the way in. So we have our four lines from our balancing transformer. I'm gonna take this neutral, come around the side and connect it over here on our neutral bar. I'm also going to take line one and line two and connect them in the proper spot on this breaker over here, matching the ones on the other side. I'm gonna give the neutral a little extra length and bring it toward the bottom, just in case I need to move that uh, transformer in the future up a little bit or anywhere else. Same thing with line one and line two, our two hots, which I'm gonna give a little bit extra length also, just in case. So now I'm gonna run our 6.3 wire, our big wire, back to our main box. We've got our line one and line two, keeping them the same as everything else in the entire system. I've got the neutral going on here. I've got my ground here. So we're just gonna put this neutral in. I'm gonna snake it up through and keep all of our big power wires in the back. Make it all nice and neat and organized. You can see each wire coming in from each component of the system. It's all organized and in order. Now the next part that is optional in the system is the safety switch or knife switch. And that 6.3 wire is really thick and tough. Coming through the bottom here, it's not gonna be an issue with hooking everything up down at the bottom. But coming in the top, there's hardly any room in these. I don't know why they design them like this. That's gonna be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears probably to get over to each of these terminals with each uh, hot wire. I'm not gonna put you through that pain on camera. Just remember, keep everything consistent. Your neutrals are gonna go down here, your grounds here, and your two hot wires here, and then the same two hot wires up here at the top, and you're good to go. So this is our main panel. This is our generator interlock kit. It comes here and connects with our main power switch coming in from the house, our main breaker. This is the 200 amp service, and it will sit down here. This slides across mechanically, so you cannot have one on over the other. This position is where our 70 amp breaker is going to go. I'm gonna move this one out of here. It's for something we don't use. I'm gonna move this double pull out of here. Our 70 amp double pull is gonna go here. A friend's gonna wire this in for me. He's an electrician, uh, something I'm not comfortable with working in a live main panel, so he's gonna take care of it for me. So just switching that. Running the, I already ran the Romex, that 6.3 through the roof. So that's gonna come down here. Our interlock kit's gonna get put on and that's how the system is going to work. So in the future, I'm gonna worry about automatic transfer switches and AC input into these, but that's for a different day. And the nice thing about these grow watts is you don't need to have AC input, but it gives you the option, which is a really nice feature. So you notice we don't have our PV wires coming into the house yet. And that is because we haven't had our phone line surveyed and our internet line surveyed. So I can't dig the trench to bring those PV wires over to the house and bring them in. That's a really easy process. I'll do it on a different video. 
So I can wrap up with you today. This is how you wire the system. Now, since I also don't have the batteries yet, I can't show you how to connect those. I will save that for another video as well. And along with hooking up the PV wires, I will show you how to do the communications to stack these two because they aren't connected yet either, but I'm gonna to wait to get that power in here. But this is the basic wiring setup to get this thing working. And additionally, in the near future, we will show y'all how to program these. So we have a lot of information for you here on the channel and a lot of upcoming information. Now go click on this video right here, which tells you how much each component in our solar system costs. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye.